Welcome to the second video of this series on object-oriented programming in Python. Let's look at a very simple class that doesn't do anything. Classes have a dunder dict attribute. It's a mapping proxy object. Mapping proxy is basically a read-only dictionary. Note that I'm not creating any instances of this class, this is the class itself. Remember that everything is an object in Python. That includes classes also. Classes are objects that allow us to create new objects or instances of the class. We will get into more details of that when we look into topics like metaprogramming. So most of the things that you will see for classes apply to any object in Python. Dunderdict is used to store attributes of the class. For example, if we had a class attribute defined, it will be stored in the Dunderdict. We see the class attribute name A as a string in the dictionary and its value 10. Mention this is like a read-only dictionary. So you can access these attributes just like how you do it with a dictionary. If you try to assign values to it directly, Python raises a type error exception. You can even define a class with just a documentation string in its body. Now if you see its attributes, the dunder doc will have this documentation string. Note that not all class attributes are stored in dunder dict. For example, the dunder name attribute. We usually use this dot syntax to access the attributes of a class or object. You can use the dot syntax to set attributes on classes. And these attributes will be stored in the class dictionary. You can't set attributes on built-in classes like string or int, but it works fine for user-defined classes. Convention is to name classes with camel case starting with a capital letter. Only classes that are written in C language like str or int will be with lowercase letters. Just a quick tip, there is a built-in function vars, which will return the dunder dict of an object. Another way to access an attribute of a class, or an object, is using the built-in getAtter function. This is the same as using the dot syntax. If you try to access an attribute that doesn't exist, getAtter raises an attribute error exception. GetAtter accepts a third argument which allows us to specify a default value if the attribute doesn't exist instead of raising an exception. Similarly, there are setatter and dlatter. Setatter is equivalent to assigning a value using dot syntax. Dlatter is equivalent to using the del function. Use of getatter, setatter and dlatter is when you want to get, set or delete attributes dynamically on objects using the string representation of attributes. For example, we have a dictionary with attribute names as keys. We want to set all of them on my class dynamically. We can't use the dot syntax for this purpose, but we can use setatter. Now, let's create an object using a class. Create the object by calling the class using parenthesis, just like how we call a function. This creates an object or instance of the class. The object also has its dictionary, and we can access it using its dunder dict attribute. This dictionary is empty. Unlike class, an object's dunder dict is not a mapping proxy, it's a normal dictionary. If you set any attributes on the object, it will be added to the object's dictionary. You can access the variable using dot syntax or use the get adder. All the things we saw till now with the class dictionary also apply to the object dictionary. One additional thing is that, since object dictionary is not read-only like class's dictionary, we can even assign attributes directly. What about the class attribute A? You can access the class attribute using the object just like how you can access it directly using class. But can we modify the class attribute from an object? Let's try assigning a new value to attribute A through the object. If you check the value of attribute A through the object, you will see the new value. If you check the original class attribute, you will that it is unchanged. So what's happening here? If you check the object's dictionary, you will see an entry for attribute A. This is masking the class attribute. This means you cannot modify the class attributes through objects directly. Another thing to understand is the order of the attribute lookup. Python first checks in the object's dictionary, 
If the attribute is not there, only Python will look in the class. Class attributes are shared across all the instances of that class. Things stored in the instances dictionary are specific to that instance. If you create a second object from the same class, it will be able to see the original class attribute.